beard. Fuck off, same old. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he's oh. just giving us a thumbs up. <laughs> Oops. Hi, folks. Um, Eagle Spitz here from Punk for the Homeless. Uh, on Desert Island Vids over on Punk for Homeless Eclectic uh, Virtual Festival. Today with me I've got Paul from the Blisses. Hello mate. Hello Eagle, how are you doing? Yeah, not bad at all buddy, not bad at all. How's you? Yep, yeah, surviving, just keeping me head down. So, are you, no, um, no work for three, three weeks at least, so... Uh... <laughs> oh, well, that, that's alright as long as you're getting paid. <laughs> No, yeah, well, from Boris's man, magic money tree, that's that's what's going to be paying me for the next three weeks, I think. So, I think yeah. I've just got to find more and more inventive ways of uh, wasting time. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, <laughs> brilliant. Well, maybe you can keep your reviews. What do more reviews on your? Um, was it Chairman? Chairman oh, Paul. Chairman Paul. Uh, unfortunately, that page has been down for a while. I, I've just not had the time to do anything with it, but uh, I think I might have to start it up again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> so tell us a bit about yourself, mate. Are you involved in the punk scene? How all that, how all that started? Well, um, I, I, I grew up listening to heavy metal, and like I, I was well, well into me thrash metal. Uh, and and that, that came carried on for years and years up until um the early 1990s when when grunge came along and basically decimated the entire music scene and you had all these bands that no longer knew what they wanted to do anymore you know all going off trying different musical bits and pieces especially with a lot of the bands that i were listening i was listening to that they, they they were going a lot more commercial and uh, a lot of them were just knocking it on the head. So it, it, it just uh, wasn't for me anymore. Um, all, all my mates went off listening to death metal and I, I, I can't get on with that. I, I like to be able to understand what the singers are singing about. I mean, if, if you're just gonna get up on stage and bark like a dog, you might as well just get a dog. <laughs> so, but that, that was when um, I got into punk instead. And uh, you know, started off the usual way: Sex Pistols, Sham Sixty Nine, Stiff Little Fingers. Uh, and I'd, I'd go to gigs in London, no normally on my own. Um, and then when it got to about 1992, 1993, I left art college and um, found, found myself unemployed for for two years. You know, we were in the middle of a recession. There, there, there were no jobs around um and i just felt totally lost and that that was when i come across conflict and the blaggers who, who were the two bands I, I just heard them like oh wow i've got to have some more of this especially with the blaggers you know it was, it was like they spoke to me sort of thing on you know they, they were just normal guys and it, it was the political aspect of it as well i absolutely loved it you know it was it was mad it was angry it was in your face and i loved it and um that they're the two bands that i'd give the credit for for the formation of the blissets what some 12 13 years later i mean that it was back then that was when i started writing songs in, in fact you, you know our song nothing to lose by chains I, I actually i actually wrote that back in the early 90s that was the first song i ever wrote uh, but it didn't actually come out in song form <laughs> until we put the band together in uh, two, late 2004, I think it was. So, okay. and, and that's that, you know, it was, what, what happened was, um, I joined up with the, the Chilton Hunt Sabs, and we, 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 we'd go out sabbing on a, on, a, on a weekly basis, you know, just stop, stop the Oix killing foxes and... Uh, Get up to all man all manner of hijinks. Um and then when when they banned it, I, I know there's a, a lot of debate about whether it's actually banned. We all know they're still hunting, but anyway, a vast majority of the group disbanded. Um so there was a couple of us that, that found ourselves with a, with a lot of time on our hands. So we we thought, all right, we will form a band. We've been talking about it for 
ages and ages. So we actually got around to doing it. Uh, initially, we, we were just a covers band. And then once we started writing our own, our own songs, that was it. We changed the name to the Blissits. And then, um, well, you know the rest. <laughs> you, meant, uh, you mentioned uh, Blaggers RTA. Would you like to introduce your first song, buddy? Yes, I would. Uh, the first song I want to introduce is Blaggers uh, Abandoned Ship, which, hey, Very brilliant. 12 inch single, <laughs> fantastic stuff. Uh, which you know is, is about ho homeless people, you know, co coming to London expecting the streets to be paved of gold and uh, <laughs> finding they're paved with shit, really, and uh ending up on the streets. But the, the, the thing I liked about the Blaggers was, you know, they, they started as a punk band, uh, like an, an oi band, uh, but basically grew beyond the uh, three chords. And you, you can see from this video that, you know, what, what you see in this video is, uh, well, there's punk, there's hip hop, there's all manner of stuff going on. Uh, but it was due to the wonders of the internet that uh, I got to know a couple of the Blaggers and uh, you know, who were mates to this day. And it was Jason, the jester, the drummer, told me that th this video version, they actually had to do an edited version of the song for TV. So like, this is the only, this version is the only place you will see that version because I think oh. the, uh, the the 12 inch single version is about five minutes long. <laughs> so, something I haven't got in my collection, unfortunately. I need to, need to see if I can get hold of a copy. Oh, there's, there's, there's plenty of them on eBay, mate. <laughs> no, I've got a fair amount of Blaggers stuff. Um, in fact, Marv Gadji were doing this uh, Punk for Homeless um, yeah. joint zine, and he asked me my favourite punk album, and it was a, uh, a Blaggers album, but the extended version, which is put out by Mad Butcher, because it's got uh, EPs and stuff on it. And I, I fucking oh, yeah. Love, I fucking love that version of the Clash's uh, Guns of Brixton. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. They, they they do a cracking. They've done two versions of it. There's a uh, there was the the early version that they did on the Blagger Muffin 12 inch, and then they did uh, they did a later version. Um, you know, once once they were signed to a major label, which was a lot more produced and everything. But it's it's, it's still a it's still a cracking uh, cracking version of it. But yeah, I've, I've 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 got everything they ever released. I've even got um. I've got a seven inch acetate of their He's Johnny single that uh, Brendan, Brendan H, the Blaggers trumpet player, he, he, he gave me that. So, and there's, there's, there's only a handful of them about. <laughs> Brilliant. So, tell us a little bit about the Blissets then. We could talk for hours about Blaggers RTA, but tell us something about the Blissets, what you get up to and your music and the band and stuff. Well, um, <coughs> you know, we, we started out as a a politically aware band, you know, didn't see any point in really um, singing songs about just endlessly drinking beer and having fun with our mates or singing love songs. Yeah, there's millions of songs like that, especially like the drinking beer with your mates, because, you know, that's pretty much every always song ever written. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Good old stuff. I do love the oppressed. <laughs> I like um, the oppressed, yeah. We, we played with them. At, um, the 0161 festival a couple of years ago and also we did the um i've forgotten the name of it now <laughs> uh mm -hmm. united and strong festival which we played out with the blaggers so, yeah so yeah, yeah we, we do a lot of um we get about a bit obviously no gigs at the moment due to the, the current circumstances but uh we'll, we'll get out there because I've, I've, I've literally got about two albums worth of material that uh the rest of the band need to come up with the music for and oh. uh you know finally get our, our, our next album could be a triple album i tell you <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. i mean i'm a, i'm a big sandinista fan myself <laughs> <laughs> but, um so what's your next song buddy uh the next song i chose number two is uh built for speed by motorhead now motorhead i've i've loved Ever since, I mean, I'm sure everyone's seen it. That classic episode of the Young Ones. Well, where, we where actually they... had that the other day as part of um, Dunk from uh, Miss Belt. It was one of his favourite tunes. It, so it was one of his three. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ace of Spades. 
I've, I've just heard that song too many times, I, I think. And I know Lemmy himself was a, was a bit sick of playing it, but he, he always said that they had to play it because people wanted to hear it. And uh, he said that when he went to gigs, you know, he always expected to hear the big hits. So, uh, but Built, Built for Speed, um, off of the, is, is another one I made earlier. Hey. Off of the Orgasmatron album. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's, it's, it's my favourite song it's of, of Motorhead, you know, I, I think they've got so many more songs that are, that are better than the Ace of Spades. Uh, but for the, the Orgasmatron album was when, uh, when they were a four piece. And um, I, that, that, was, that was my era, because I, I think I, I missed the original three piece lineup, obviously the later three piece lineup, I, I know. But uh, I mean, th this video, I picked this one because although um, there's a different drummer on Orgasmatron, uh, this has actually got Filthy Animal Taylor playing the drums on, on, on the video. And uh, I, I love Filthy Animal. He, he, was, uh, he was what you expect a drummer should be. He was an absolute madman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. That's what you want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was talking to Spud from the Tokyo Rankers on air a few days ago. Yeah. And they he did a gig in London and uh, some fucking guys giving them Nazi salutes. So yeah. they some piled over a fucking drum kit and attacked them as well. And it'll be fucking <laughs> <laughs> total fucking rock for gig to turn into. Yeah, I, 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 I can well imagine. But I, I mean, with, with us, our, our politics are well documented. So people like that know to stay well away. So, uh, I mean, as you know from uh, previous incidents that uh, some of the other guys in the band have had, without going into too much detail, that uh, racism's not really tolerated, is it? <laughs> no, no, nor should it be. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I guess, I mean, being a black, big Blaggers fan, I mean, uh, a lot of your stuff is political. I mean, I remember yeah. calling Blaggers, the uh, Blissett's RTA on uh, the radio show once. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, the blissets in the area. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So, what's your next song, mate? Right, the um, the third song is "Independent" by an American thrash band called Sacred Reich. Uh, not punk, I know, but um, I've not got the actual record of Independent, because it's, it's rarer than Rocking Horse Poop to get on vinyl. I've, I've got it on CD. But, just to show off, here's their first album. <laughs> oh, brilliant. <laughs> and um, the, the, the thing I always loved about Sacred Right, and especially with, with, with Thrash, where you've got your big four, Metallica, Megadeth, Anthrax, Slayer, you know, the bands that everyone knows, it's the smaller bands, the lesser bands, like Sacred Reich, Exodus, they all tended to be a lot more political in their lyrics, especially with Sacred Reich. I mean, I mean, recently they, they've been taking a lot of stands against um, racism. You know, they're, they're American. They've been taking a lot of st stands against racism in their own country, especially when they got an idiot president. So it was the ironic thing. I saw them, I think it was a year before last, that they came on stage and the first thing they did was apologise for having a moron in charge of their country. Oh, brilliant. So it's when you think they couldn't chop, top George Bush. <laughs> exactly. But the, uh, the reason I chose Independent is because it, uh, it, it just represents me, you know. I'm, I'm an independent person. I think what I think. I, I don't let other people try and sway me but I mean the song does the talking so brilliant last <laughs> <laughs> but what's all so I mean obviously we're in the plague at the moment yeah when we're, when we're, when we're on the other side where can people find you and in the meantime where can I find your stuff well um you, you, can, you can at the moment you can download our last EP with a Blissit, so the chuff for you from uh, Bandcamp. I think it's the Blissits.bandcamp.com. I think. I think that's the address. Yeah, it is. Uh, or you know, we've got a Facebook page. Uh, or you just follow the links there. Or if you go to www.theblissits.co.uk, you can get you can get links from there to Bandcamp to our Twitter page, all sorts. You can get well, you can get everything there. 
<laughs> Brilliant stuff. Well, thanks for being on, Mum. It's good to have a catch no up. No worries, mate. Keep nice your stuff. head down and keep safe. And you, buddy, and you. <laughs> I don't know what... <laughs>